Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sriti Nami Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pratarine Nirvishesya Sunyapadi Pasyatya Dishatarine Sarasati Devi Gauravani Prachari Me Nirvishesya Shunyapari Pasatya Dhishatari Me Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sriha Dvaita Kadadha Sri Vasadhi Ko Bhakta Vinda Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sriha Dvaita Kadadha Srivasadi Kaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 
कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Netai gor hari gor hari gor hari gor netai gor hari gor hari gor hari gor hari gor hari gor hari gor Prabhu Pajai Shila Prabhu Pajai Shila Prabhu Pajai Shila Prabhu Pajai Shila Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaivana Rotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraya Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki So I'm going to begin this evening on Canto 4 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Chapter 1. Chapter 1 is titled The Genealogical Table of the Daughters of Manu. So in this chapter we'll hear about the different daughters of Manu, Swayambhuva Manu, that is. So at the end of the third canto we have Lord Kapila teaching Devahuti and we in the, in the end of the third canto 
all the pastimes of uh, Lord Kapila instructing his mother Devahuti after her husband Kardama had gone away and renounced her and renounced the world. Lord Kapila was left to instruct his mother. So that's at the end of the third canto and the fourth canto Huh? Fourth canto continues with the instructions of Maitreya. Well, Vidur, Maitreya is instructing Vidura, and we're hearing about the other daughters because Svayambhuvamanu and his wife Satarupa, they had three daughters. There was Akuti, Devahuti, and Prashuti. So Devahuti was described in the third canto. Devahuti was the mother of Lord Kapila. Now in the fourth canto, we're going to hear about the other daughters, Akuti and Prashuti, first of all. There will be other ladies also described, but the chapter begins anyway, hearing about Akuti. She's the oldest of the daughters of Swayambhuvamana, the three daughters. Ah. So, we'll also hear about the daughters of Daksha. And actually, Kardama Muni and Devahuti, they also had daughters. And we will hear about them, what happened to them. Right? First of all, however, we're going to hear about Akuti. And it's described that King Swayambhuva Manu, he gave Akuti to the Prajapati Ruchi as a wife. Prajapati Ruchi wanted a wife and Swayambhuva Manu gave his daughter Akuti to him. But there was a condition. <laughs> he didn't just give his daughter, but he put a condition. And the condition was that when she delivers a son, that son should come to me. <laughs> That's un a little unusual, but Anyway, this was the condition which uh, Svayambhuvamanu put on Prajapati Ruchi. Prajapati Ruchi was a saintly Brahmin and he agreed, he granted this wish of Svayambhuvamanu that if your daughter conceives a son, I will give the son to you. Why, why did Svayambhuvamanu ask like that? So the Acharyas explained to us that Svayambhuvamanu actually knew that his daughter Akuti was going to deliver a child who was an incarnation of the Lord. Her child would be the personality of Godhead. So Svayambhuvamanu was anxious that this child should come in my family. It wasn't enough for him that the child would be his grandson, but he wanted the child to come in his own home and be like his son. And so it happened that Akuti was given to Ruchi and in course of time she delivered both a son and a daughter. And the son was indeed an incarnation of the personality of Godhead. And he was known as Yagna which is another name of Lord Vishnu. So when the child was born, the child was given to Svayambhuvamanu. And when the child was born, there was another child also born, a girl. And that girl was a partial expansion of the goddess of fortune. Uh, the girl was given the name Dakshina. 
So actually the two, uh, Yajna and Dakshina, they're actually eternal consorts. The Goddess of Fortune is eternally the consort of Lord Vishnu. She belongs to him. And so as they gr grew up, it was arranged that the two were married. And they married and in course of time they also produced twelve children, twelve sons actually. So Ruchi, we said, he was very powerful and he was very brahminical and that's why he was made one of the progenitors of the of human society. So when the two children were born, Swayambhuva Manu came and claimed the son. That was the agreement in giving the daughter in marriage. And Ruchi, the father of the child, he agreed, he let Swayambhuva Manu take the male child. But later on it was arranged that the two, the two children became husband and wife and they produced their own children. So it's pointed out by Srila Prabhupada here in this purport, in this section that uh, that Dakshina, she wanted to have Lord Yagna as her husband and the Lord was very pleased to accept her as his wife and in course of time they were able to have twelve children. These twelve children were all actually demigods. So in the purport to this section, Srila Prabhupada comments about the importance of the relationship between husband and wife. And he says the ideal husband and wife are generally called Lakshmi and Narayan to compare them to the Lord and the Goddess of Fortune. All right? The wife should think of her husband as being non-different from Lord Narayan and the husband should think of his wife as the goddess of fortune. In this way, wife should always remain satisfied with her husband and a husband should remain satisfied with his wife. That's very important today in the modern world. Of course, we know people are very restless and they find it difficult to be satisfied. So Prabhupada quotes the Chanakya Sloka, he says that the moral instruction of Chanakya Pandit, it is said that if a husband and wife are always satisfied with one another, then the goddess of fortune will automatically come to them and bless them. In other words, where there is no disagreement between husband and wife, all material opulences will be present and good children are born. Generally, according to Vedic culture, the wife is trained to be satisfied in all conditions and the husband, according to Vedic conditions, is, com is required to please the wife and, and supply sufficient food, ornaments and clothing. And it's the duty of the husband to take care of the wife and in this way the wife will be kept happy. She's given proper ornaments and clothing and food and she nicely looked after and spoken nicely, then 
she will naturally be satisfied in her life. So Srila Prabhupada continues then in the purport. He said, then if, if they are satisfied with their material, with their mutual dealings, then good children are born. In this way the entire world can become peaceful. But then Prabhupada concludes, he said, unfortunately in the age of Kali we lack ideal husbands and, 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 and we lack ideal husbands and wives. Therefore, uh, unwanted children are produced and there is no peace and prosperity in the present day world. So this is uh, Srila Prabhupada's comment. This was of course in Prabhupada's time, Prabhupada wrote the purport to this section. It must have been like 1970, 1972 maybe. Prabhupada was writing the third canto, fourth canto, maybe 73 or 74. Prabhupada was on the fourth canto. So it's nearly 50 years ago. Now things have changed, of course, in time. Things have okay, changed, and they don't usually change for the better. They change for the worse. But, but the instructions are still relevant today. The importance of uh, the husband and wife living together peacefully and co cooperating with each other for spiritual advancement. So it can make a big difference to the world situation. People can be peaceful and happy. At the age of Kali, generally people are always disturbed. They don't have peace of mind. But they can do it's possible to change. It's possible to change. And when people hear these kind of things, when we hear these kind of instructions, moral instructions, if, if we take them seriously, then it can make a big difference to our life. Living together peacefully and cooperating together. So in this way Prabhupada is giving some relevant instruction to us. So during the time of Swayambhuvamanu, all of these sons who were born from Yagna and Dakshina, they all became demigods and they were collectively called the Tushitas. Marichi became the head of the seven rishis and Yagna became the king of the demigods, Indra. Then, in addition to Svayambhuvamanu having three daughters, he also had two very powerful sons. One was Priyavrat and the other was Uttanapad. So their, their sons and grandsons, they spread all over the world during that period. They spread all over the three worlds. The three worlds, meaning not just simply this heaven, this abode, but the higher planets also, in the higher regions of the universe. So you have Bhuva Loka, Bhuvar Loka and Swarga Loka, the three worlds. So of these suns, we heard about Kardama Muni. Uh, rather, uh, I was, we were talking about Devahuti. Devahuti was married to Kardama Muni, and they produced nine daughters in addition to one son. The one son, of course, was Lord Kapila, and the nine daughters. Before Kadama Muni renounced, he arranged for the marriage of his nine daughters. 
and they were all handed over to great sages. So Swayambhuva Manu, he had three daughters. We heard about Akuti and how she had the incarnation of the Lord and the daughter also, Dakshina, who was the goddess of fortune. But there was another daughter called Prashuti and Prashuti, she was given to Daksha, who was a son of Brahma. So Daksha is another Prajapati and he is also very senior in the universe. And it said the descendants of Daksha are also spread throughout the three worlds. So Kardama Muni and his wife, they had nine daughters. And then Maitreya tells us about how these nine daughters were handed over to nine great sages. And probably the most interesting of the nine was that uh, Anasuya was given to Atrimuni, the great sage Atrimuni. He was married to Anasuya and they were asked, like all of the other sages and the daughters, they were asked by Lord Brahma that you should help to fill up the universe, produce progeny. Married life generally is meant to have children. So Lord Brahma gave these instructions to his descendants and when they were married they asked them, go and have, a, have produced some progeny. So Anasuya and his good wife, Anasuya and her husband, Atrimuni, then went away to a heavenly abode where they practiced austerities, first of all. They did not immediately engage in conjugal activities to produce a child. Jai Jagannath Baladeva Subhadra Ki Jai. They did not immediately enter into the attempt to produce children, but rather they first of all underwent austerities. Remember, we're talking about Satya Yuga. So in the Satya Yuga, people lived a long life. They had a life of 100,000 years. So Atri Muni and his good wife Anasuya, they went away to perform tapasya. And they, Atri Muni was a great renunciate and he controlled his breathing. He lived on air and he stood on one leg for a period of a hundred years. It's inconceivable to our lifestyle, but this is how he lived with his wife. They went to this very beautiful heavenly place where there was a waterfall, there were beautiful trees with fragrant, fragrant flowers. It was that kind of place will naturally arouse sexual desire. But they were very sense controlled. They controlled their mind and senses very seriously. And the husband controlled his breathing. He lived on air for a hundred years, standing on one leg. And then it happened that after this time, there were three personalities appeared to them. And they were all personalities representing the Supreme Lord. There was first of all Lord Vishnu, 
Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. And their partial representations came before Atrimuni. There was Soma, who is a partial representation of Lord Brahma. Dattatreya, who is a great mystic, and he's a representation of Lord Vishnu. And Durvasa was a representation, partially, of Lord Shiva. So, it was surprising to Atrimuni when these three personalities appeared before him because Atrimuni had been praying he wanted a child like the Supreme Lord. He wanted to get a child who was just like the Supreme Lord. And so when these three personalities appeared before him, then he asked them, which one of you is the Supreme Lord? Because I've been meditating and praying that we would have a child who is not who is who is like the Supreme Lord. So the three personalities looked at Atri Muni and they smiled and they said, we are all, the three of us are the Supreme Lord. One is the representation of Lord Brahma, one was the representation of Lord Vishnu and one was the representation of Lord Shiva. Lord Brahma is responsible for the secondary creation. He performs the creation of the different planets, puts them in position, and he creates also the bodies of the different living entities. So he is the Lord of the universe. And Lord Vishnu, he is the super soul in the hearts of all living entities. He is responsible for the maintenance of the universal manifestation. So Lord Vishnu is also the Lord of the universe. And Lord Shiva, he is responsible for the annihilation and the devastation at the end of the universe. So Lord Shiva is also the Lord of the universe. Atri Muni had made a mistake. You see, Atri Muni was not a pure devotee. He was praying to get a child like the Lord of the universe. He did not pray to get a child who is the Lord of the universe. But he prayed, I want a child like the Lord of the universe. So we point out that Atri Muni was not a pure devotee because he just asked to get a child like the Lord of the universe. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes people who come to him with material desires. Chatur Vida Vajantimam Jnana Sukriti no Arjuna Arto Jignasur Artarti Jnani Cha Bharat Arshaba That there are four kinds of people who all come to surrender to the Lord. They all have Sukriti, but they come for different reasons. Some come in distress, some come in search of wealth, some come out of curiosity, and some come in search of knowledge. So Atrimuni comes into this category because he came with a material desire. He did not just simply want the Lord as his son, but he wanted a child who is like the Lord of the universe. 
So, the, the three personalities, one who is the partial incarnation of Lord Brahma, one is the partial incarnation of Lord Shiva and one is the partial incarnation of Lord Vishnu. They were recognizable because they each came on their carriers. Lord Brahma rides a swan, Lord Shiva rides his bull and Lord Vishnu rides on Garuda, his bird carrier. And they each carried appropriate things in their hand, like Lord Vishnu had in his hand the chakra, the disc, the Sudarshan chakra, which is the weapon of Lord Vishnu. Lord Shiva, he had Lord Shiva, he had in his hand the Dhammuru drum. Lord Shiva likes to play the drum when he will chant the holy names of the Lord and dance. And he does so even at the time of devastation. So he has his little drum which he plays. And Lord Brahma had kusha grass because Lord Brahma is fond of yagna. If you go to Satyaloka, you'll see the people there, they do yagna. So Lord Brahma had kusha grass in it. In this way, Atri Muni could recognize the three personalities. So they came as the three sons of Anasuya and Atri Muni. They came as Soma, who was the partial incarnation of Lord Brahma, Dattatreya, partial incarnation of Lord Vishnu, and Durvasa, partial incarnation of Lord Shiva. So this way, uh, Atri Muni and his wife, they got their children and of course, they went on to produce more. Their children also then went on to have m produce more people. Uh, another important pastime which took place in relation to these uh, daughters of Kadama Muni, it's described many different daughters, so each of them are mentioned. So Maitreya tells us that the population of the universe was increased by the descendants of these sages and the daughters of Kardama Muni. And then he continues, he said, another of Manu's daughters, Manu's Krachuti, married the son of Brahma named Daksha. So Daksha is quite a character. We hear about him quite a bit in the Srimad Bhagavatam and in this section of the Bhagavatam we will be hearing more about Daksha. Anyway, Daksha had uh, 16 very beautiful daughters by his wife Prashuti. Remember the three daughters of Swayambhuvamanu 
Akuti, Devahuti, and Prashuti. So Daksha was married to Prashuti and they had 16 very beautiful daughters. And of these 16 daughters, 13 were given in marriage to Dharma. All the, each of the girls, they could choose the husband they wanted. So 13 of the girls, 13 of the daughters, they all selected the same husband. They all selected Dharma for their husband. Another daughter, however, was given to Agni, the fire god. And then there were two remaining daughters. One of the daughters went to Pitriloka and she was happy to live there at Pitriloka. And the youngest daughter, the youngest daughter of Daksha was Sati and she was given to Lord, she chose Lord Shiva as her husband. So this is a prelude to the next section which is coming in the next chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam here. We'll hear about Daksha doing a yagya and how he offends Lord Shiva. Daksha was the father-in-law of Lord Shiva. So Daksha was not very happy when his daughter Sati married Lord Shiva. Because Lord Shiva, you know, see Daksha was a, was a great king. He was opulent. He was wealthy. He was doing big yagyas. And Lord Shiva living under a tree. So Daksha was not very happy that my daughter is going to live with this madman. You know, he often goes naked and he wears the skulls around his neck and his body is covered in ashes. But Sati, of course, is the eternal consort of Lord Shiva. And she chose Lord Shiva for her husband when she was a young girl. She was still a young girl. She hadn't even reached pu pu puberty, but she was given in marriage to Lord Shiva. So it happened that Daksha was always insulting Lord Shiva. And we will hear how Sati gives up her body in disgust at being connected to Daksha. She doesn't want to have a father like Daksha, who is so envious and so nasty to Lord Shiva. Because Sati has the greatest respect for her husband, Lord Shiva. So it happened that Sati gave up her body before she even had a child. So th this is the prelude for the next section. We're going to hear why would Sati give up her body like this? Mm -hmm. Another important point which is mentioned in this chapter is that there's a, one of the daughters, uh, one of the daughters of the great sage with her husband, they produced a child who was the incarnation of Godhead, Nara Narayan. Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. So this Nara Narayan Rishi was born from uh, Murti and her husband, they produced Nara Narayan Rishi. And when Jai Jagannath Baladev Simbal, when Nara Narayan Rishi appeared, then the whole world became very opulent. All the heavens threw flowers on the earth and Everything became very beautiful, very peaceful. The whole world was rejoicing. 
because the Lord had appeared in the form of Nara Narayan Rishi. So the demigods offered prayers to Nara Narayan Rishi. They praised the Lord's appearance in this world and they congratulated him that he was by coming onto the earth. That although he is the master and the whole world comes from him, that he is so kind that he appears also in the air. Although just like air and water are here in the earth, everything is contained within the sky, in the same way everything is in the Lord. But the Lord is so kind that he personally comes here onto this planet, he appears here. So the demigods were glorifying him. And then it's pointed out that Nara Narayan Rishi also incarnates during the time of Lord Krishna 5,000 years ago that Nara Narayan are there in the form of Lord Krishna and Arjuna. Arjuna is Nara, the energy of the Lord. And Lord Krishna is not different from Narayan. He, he is energetic. So Nara and Narayan were personally present on the planet 5,000 years ago. And it said even today, Nara and Narayan Rishi are residing in the Himalayas, in Badarik Ashram. They're performing their tapasya there. And Dhruva Maharaj also would go there to the to Badari Ashram. Later on, we'll hear Dhruva Maharaj, the son of Uttanapada, how he goes to Badari Ashram and after retiring from ruling the world, he goes to Badari Ashram in the Stapasya and associates with the great sages there and Nara Narayan Rishis. They're all there. So in this way, we hear about the, the progeny of these different ladies and how they arrange for the, the whole universe to be populated nicely. It's mentioned also about the fire, the fire gods. The fire god was married to one of the wife, one of the uh, daughter, daughters of Daksha. She, he was married to uh, Swaha and they had three children. And the, these three children, they are all responsible for eating the ablations offered in the fire of sacrifice. Usually these fire of sacrifices are done by the impersonalists. But anyway, the offerings of oblations are eaten by the fire god. And it said from these three sons of Swaha, there were 45 descendants. And they are also fire gods. So the total number of fire gods becomes 49. You have 45 and the grandsons are 45. You have the three sons making 48 and you have the grandfather, Agni himself, 49. So in this way, 49 different uh, demigods who are all responsible for eating the offerings. All right. And then the last part is in relation to Sati. That because Sati was such a young girl, she had no issue and she gave, she gave up her body without any child. So this is su surprising and this sets the scene for the next chapter where we will hear about the Daksha Yapya and how Lord Shiva is cursed by Daksha. Daksha is so expert in insulting 
and it brings about his downfall. So in this section of Srimad Bhagavatam, we'll hear of the conflict which takes place between the devotees of Lord Shiva and the Brahmanas, how there's often some conflicts in their understanding. The followers of Lord Shiva and the followers of Bhrigu Muni, the Brahmanas, they have conflicts, they have disagreements. Bhrigu Muni's people, the Brahmanas, they don't appreciate so much Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva's people, they're completely devoted to Lord Shiva. They just simply follow Lord Shiva and depend on Lord Shiva. He's their deliverer from birth and death. He delivers them from all sins. All right, are there any questions? So we were hearing about the three sons, the three daughters of Swayambhuvamanu, Akuti, Devahuti, Prashuti. And then we heard also about the, the different daughters of Kardama Muni and Devahuti. They had nine daughters and their nine daughters were given to great sages. Then we also heard about Daksha and how Daksha was given 16 daughters or Daksha was married to a, a Prashuti. First of all, Akuti, he, she was married to the Prajapati Ruchi and they had two children. One was Yagna, the personality of Godhead and the daughter, Dakshina, who was an expansion of the goddess of fortune. And later on, they become husband and wife, because Lakshmi is the eternal consort of Lord Narayan. And so those were the children of Akuti. And then Prashuti, she was given to Daksha. And Daksha produced 16 daughters in the womb of his wife and 13 of these daughters were given in marriage to Dharma. One was given to Agni, one was give, went to Petriloka and the final one, the youngest daughter was given to Lord Shiva, Sati. So this is the information on the progeny of the daughters coming from Lord it's Brahma. Huh? Who? This progeny expansion, but you see, if only refers to the current present world here, or it goes to two different times and different Well, we're talking about things in the beginning of the creation. At the time of Satya, in the Satya Yuga, at the beginning of the life of Brahma, the very first Manu, Swayambhuva Manu. One Manu lives for how many days, how, how long? A Manu will live for? How many Manus in the lifetime of Brahma? Fourteen. Fourteen Manus in the lifetime of Brahma. So this is the first Manu, Swayambhuva Manu. Now we're in the Vivashvata Manu. It's the, we're in the middle of Brahma's life. But at the beginning, we're hearing about the, the, the creation, the secondary creation. Primary creation is done by Lord Vishnu. The secondary creation is taken up by Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma has to think how to populate the universe. He needs population to fill up the universe. And so he arranges for his different sons. Remember, Lord Brahma has many different sons which come from his mind. 
you have Narada Muni, he's one of the sons of Brahma. You have the four Kumaras, they're also sons of Brahma. And Lord Shiva also comes from Brahma. And then we're talking about Daksha, another son of Brahma. So there are many different sons of Brahma. And he arranged Manu, Swayambhuva Manu was also a son of Brahma and he appeared along with his wife Shatarupa and he asked them to also take up the work of population, to produce progeny. So Swayambhuva Manu and his wife, they had, we said, three daughters and two sons and the two sons were very powerful and they produced also many offspring, their descendants are also spread over the three worlds. Hmm. You, Maharaj, in the beginning of the lecture you were saying about Prabhupada's uh, purport on husband and wife, how they can be made satisfied. So, in Kali Yuga, um, could you elaborate a little bit about the duties of the husband and the wife and how they can be satisfied Yes, well, the duties, duties in family life are that we should live in Krishna consciousness, right? That we should make Krishna the center of the home and we should live together in Krishna consciousness. We want to encourage uh, the home, that the home should be a spiritual place. It shouldn't be like uh, Prahlad Maharaj told his father that, you know, you're in the blind well, you're in the Greha under Kupam. There are two kinds of householders, one is the Grihasta and the other is the Grihamedi. So the Grihamedi is always envious, their whole business is envy. Oh, we don't have enough, we need more. Other people have got more than us, we need more. And the whole time is spent working just to make more money and the whole purpose center of life is economic development, to have more money and have more sense gratification. So that, that is not ideal family life. Ideal family life should be centered around our spiritual uh, needs, that we need to practice some spiritual uh, practice in, in our home. Ideally, there should be some kirtan in the home, regular kirtan. We have a deity at home, we have an altar and we do a little worship, offer some arti there. And in this way, the home can be a very peaceful place. But often the, that kind of practice is forgotten and the center of the home is television and uh, internet and mobile phones and our spiritual practice is just put aside. So there is a need to control the mind and senses Prabhupada often said also, married life is like going to a feast and fasting, that there's an opportunity for unlimited sense gratification. One has to control the mind and senses carefully. So like that we have to understand the responsibility of family life. It's good to have children. Mm -hmm. But we want to create a nice home for the child, to help the child to develop in spiritual consciousness. No, disagreements will be there even between great souls, but it should not stop our service to Lord Krishna. Even though there may be disagreements and misunderstandings between even great souls, 
we see different opinions of commentators on Srimad Bhagavatam. But it doesn't disrupt their service to Lord Krishna. They remain active in their service to the Lord. They don't become disturbed, they don't become overly disturbed by disputes. Oh, okay, oh somebody has this opinion, he didn't like that, what can, what can be done? We have to go on with our devotional service despite all the difficulties and you can't expect to please everyone. We just try to please Guru and Krishna. Try to please Guru and Krishna. If Guru and Krishna are pleased, that's good. We cannot expect that we can please everyone. We'll never please everyone. But we want to please Guru and Krishna. That's important. Those in those are inquisitive and those are curious. Inquisitive and curious. It's the same thing. <laughs> inquisitive and curious. I, I don't see any difference. It's the same. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna mentions four kinds of people, right? One is in distress, one is in search of wealth, one is curious, and the other is in search of knowledge. So, hmm. Well, curiosity, they simply, they want to know. No, what is this? I don't know anything about this. But people on the path of cultivating knowledge, they know, they have some, they have, they, they know something, they want to know more, and they want to increase their knowledge. But people who are curious, oh, they just have, they just want to, what is this? So it's something, something new, I don't know what it is. And so they're beginning from nowhere, you could say, out of curiosity they come. And we, sometimes you find people who are curious, they have questions, but then after a while they don't have any more questions, they don't come anymore. Why not? They say, well, I don't have any more questions, I'm not curious anymore, now I've learned everything. But if one comes to the platform of knowledge, if you get knowledge, then you'll never give up. Krishna, you never go or you never forget Krishna anyway. So the, Krishna said of the poor, the best one is the one who comes in knowledge, in knowledge of Krishna, he's the best. But still, by the path of knowledge, you make advancement slowly. You don't go very fast by that process. It says, takes many lifetimes. But if you take to the path of devotion, then very quickly you can progress. All right? Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai.